Good morning, this is Stuart Davidson, your friendly QS. And this morning, I wanted to talk a little bit about the role of a quantity surveyor, how to best appoint a quantity surveyor, and what are the traits you want to look for in a quantity surveyor. It's quite often, I quite often have conversations with developers uh, uh, that that quite that don't always know the role of the quantity surveyor or what they're trained to do, or what their background are. There's a perception and an assumption of what quantity surveyors particularly do. Some think a quantity surveyor is there to procure a contractor or prepare a budget or control costs or to manage uh, the costs on a project, to do valuations, to work out variations that kind of thing. And yes, they do do all of those things. And there are quantity surveyors that specialise in certain parts of a building, a whole building, in tender, in procurement. So when, you know, so thinking about when should you appoint a, co- a, a quantity surveyor. Now, most quantity surveyors actually are trained in a much broader sense in property. Now, I know with my own training years ago, uh, I still keep up the training, quantity surveyors, chart, particularly chartered quantity surveyors have to keep up a certain level of CPD, continual pro- professional development training every year to, to, to keep their chartered ship. So they still have to do a lot of training. Now, what I found is that part of my background is in contracts, understanding various different kinds of contract. So that's not just a contract between an employer and a contractor or a subcontractor in the development in the construction phase but it's a a broader sense of contracts in property development now if you're doing a property development there'll be a number of phases of different types of contracts that you'll have you'll have the purchase of the land and that might include options contracts which get quite complex so that's something a quantity surveyor a chartered quantity surveyor is trained in Contracts around uh, various different options on your construction. So uh, contracts on your exit strategy. Are you uh, around leasing? Around Are you going to rent the property at the end of the project? Are you going to sell the property at the end of the project? Or it's going to be a mix of both. So a chartered surveyor has skills in contracts and also negotiating skills. There's lots of negotiating stages in a project. So your first one might be your purchase of your project, your land, your the building that you're looking at. So there's negotiations with the low, the the owners that quantity surveyors are uh, skilled and have some expertise in, and what type of contracts to to use in terms of what uh, various different types of investment strategy that you want to look at. Quantity surveyors as well, and I know we get involved broadly, more broadly with developers on 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 contracts. It's not just about the contract, the, the construction phase. It's the whole thing around, you know, we're looking for an investment. We're looking for some land. We're looking for a property. We're going to do different things with it. We might be building new or we might be. Uh, looking at a lease option, we might uh, we might not want to own a piece of land. We might just want to control that building or that land or that property and put it to best use. So one of the other skills a quantity surveyor can bring is to do options appraisals on the investment. So what's the best use of this land? What's the best uh, use of a property? Is it a commercial uh, refurbishment? Am I going to lease it? Am I going to uh, have different various options? What type of lease might I have? You know, if I don't want to own the property at this particular moment in time, but I want to control it, then it might be that I want to be able to assign that lease later on when I get more equitable value in the property. And it's how do I negotiate with an owner to bring about a win-win situation on the investment? Now, going forward, I hazard a guess that uh, there'll be there's going to be uh, coming out of the this Corona uh, shutdown, turn down, and even recession that comes. Uh, well, I think we're already in recession. I think we've been in recession, to be honest, uh, before the Corona, corona uh, lockdown. But I think it's going to uh, uh, probably. Uh, ampl- be amplified after this and I think things will change and I, I think there'll be a, a move to away from a single building ownership not necessarily ownership of a, a property asset which has always been the traditional route to 
uh, investing in property to more around equitable states in an asset. So you might want to have a certain element of control without ownership. You might want more owners uh, to uh, to have a stake in a property. So I think there's going to be a, a a need to look at how we um, how we how we invest in assets. How many people invest in assets? Are we going to joint venture more rather than want to own outright properties? Because we've seen the risk in owning properties. And I think, believe me, I think there's going to be some casualties coming out of this period. If you're a property owner, there'll be some winners, but there'll be some casualties as well. It might be that some properties for a while become um, liabilities. And you might feel that there's uh, you want to bring in some JV partners to, to have some level of control in the asset to in order to get the best out of it. So assets are assets. And but there's all different ways that you can frame deals for assets to bring about win-win situations for for owners, for those that want to uh, uh, um, to use that asset for for a, a big higher returns. So these are kind of things that quantities of a good chartered quantity surveyor can help you with right from the beginning from property appraisal what is it i should invest in what is the best return on this particular asset when is that return going to be uh when am i going to get that return is it is it now is it is it after a refurb construction new build or is it sometime in the future you know so that determines what type of contracts what type of purchase contracts what type of lease contracts now if you're looking to develop and you're looking to uh, build a new building or refurbish a building, then you have a construction phase and that's something a good charter surveyor can help you with. And sometimes uh, clients are advised, in my opinion, too often to uh, delegate responsibility and risk too highly to, to his contractor. But where you delegate risk, you lose control. And I think that owners and investors coming out of this period will probably want to look at more control over the cash in the project. Now, in the past, people have looked at and quantities of AM firms have promoted themselves as cost managers. Now, I think that's going to change. I think that it's going to come uh, more to or or uh, people are going to be looking more at cash management than cost management. Now, the difference is, is we need to know where the cash is flowing within a project. And there's going to be various different levels of distress in supply chains coming out of the coronavirus lockdown period. And as an owner, as a a business investor, you'll want to know uh, where those pinch points are. You'll want to know that your cash remains in your project. It's not leaking out. You'll want to know that there's not uh, an element of cash farming going on in your project or there's dem- the, the, you want to know what the demands on the cash that you're paying your supply chain are coming out of this. Are they still in a, uh, a, a liquid state? Are the, are the, uh, is your supply chain still liquid? Is your supply chain still solvent? You know, uh, but there are ways and I know there are, will be a lot of pressure. There'll be um, there will be some casualties coming out of this, but there are some solutions. And one thing that we're looking at that we're talking to our clients around is how we can look at taking control of the cash and understand getting more transparency on cash. And in fact, taking control of the payments throughout the whole supply chain, because what quite often happens and I'm not sure that. I, I I gave a talk uh, to a room full of developers uh, several months ago and I talked to them about where their cash goes when they pay a contractor. Now, this isn't in every case, but it is something that's quite prevalent in the industry. And I think that it's it's kind of um, it's really it's it comes about by pressure on uh, tendering, competitive tendering on contractors which brings about low profit margins and low capital, working capital levels. But uh, what happens is when a contractor or your developer, you pay your contractor, you've set them up on a traditional type of contract, which gives then gives a contractor control of the supply chain and the control over the cash in that supply chain. So you will pay your contractor some money 
in stage payments. So you pay the contractor and there's going to be coming out of this can be different demands on his cash. So it may be that he's got several projects on the go. So he might be saying, right, OK, I'll pay for the cost on that project, that project, that project out of this pot. But that pot includes your money. So your money could be leaking out of your project. The other way that contractors do it is cash leads. So they might have several projects. I'm not saying every contractor, you know, there, there are contractors that, that won't do this, but it, I'm just saying it's just one of them. I could speak for hours and hours of where your cash might go when you pay your contractor. So, but basically cash farming is lead, con, uh, lead uh, uh, cash leads for property that might be bought at a cash price, refinance quickly, and then, and then re-liquidate the cash to bring back into the project, which slows the process of the cash down puts the investor at risk because his money's no longer in the project. Now, coming out of this, I think that investors would be well advised to, uh, to, to make sure that they are in control of the cash flow within the system. And it's going to help the supply chain as well, because if they're under distress, if they're under cash distress, you still, they've still got the expertise, they've still got the skills to uh, to construct your project. That is their core skill, the builders and the supply chain. That's their skill and expertise to build projects, not to manage complex cash flow systems. But we that's what we do. We delegate a complex t- uh, cash flow um, uh, processes throughout so many different hands in the construction supply chain. And that just brings about risk. It slows down the cash. And if you slow down the cash, it slows down the return on investment. So these are strategies that a good chartered quantity of air, if you're a property developer, can help you with. So one of the things we're looking at is is managing cash, managing payments from the supplier, the bottom of the supply chain upwards, so that you know that your cash is staying in your project. You're purchasing an asset as you go along. It's helping contractors and helping supply chain to bring their, they can bring their expertise, bring their skills. You can keep, if you had a project on the go, you can keep those skills on your project, but you help them by managing the cash flow by paying direct or even your directors setting up a, you could do it by uh, setting up a uh, project to bank account, the deposits are in there, and then a quantity surveyor can manage that whole account on your behalf and ensure that the the money stays within your project. The contractor turns up and does his job that he's good at, solving complex building problems, getting the job done without the worry of the cash demands that he's going to be facing coming back after this uh, uh, shutdown period. But I think it's a good policy. I think in the future, Quantity surveyors will be used more as an overall, uh, more overarching professional uh, consultant as opposed to very, I think in the past, quantity surveyors have been very niche down, you know, even to the aspect where you'll get a quantity surveyor that deals with external cladding or roofing or a particular type of contract. I think if you're looking at uh, employing the services of a chartered surveyor that can help you identify the best way to use your investment, uh, identify a good investment in property right the way through the investment appraisal, thinking about what your exit strategy is going to be, how you're going to manage your cash within your project, help you negotiate the different types of contracts from your construction contracts to your lease options to how you can control a, a, an asset, how you own an asset or even control an asset and earn money from an asset even without owning it. So all of these kind of rounded uh, um, expertise that a quantity surveyor, a chartered quantity surveyor uh, normally has in his, in, in his tool, toolbox to become a chartered surveyor. I would say probably on average six or seven years to become a chartered surveyor. And part of the training that a surveyor gets is professional training on on the latest contracts and methods and best practice, but also through the degrees and the learning and the knowledge that they get is more than just counting bricks. And I think that a lot of developers think that quantity surveyor, quantity surveyor is just a cost manager, counts bricks, looks after the procurement of the construction. But in fact, the the core skills of a quantity surveyor can be much broader than that. So 
if you're looking at wider developments, if you're a property developer or you're an investor, sometimes it's good to appoint a quantity surveyor at the same time as an architect or even before an architect because your your quantity surveyor can talk to you about the overarching appraisal development of options that you might have for your investment and advise when the best time to bring in a an architect uh, a strategist in terms of uh, construction strategists uh, logistics experts uh, other design uh, designers you know around your construct your uh, structural engineers and, and m and e engineers and and uh, landscaping engineers planning consultants there's a big, you know, whole range of expertise and skill that can be procured and brought into the project at certain times and marketing as well, because most m- projects will need to be market tested if you're investing in a project and also around your cash flow, you're going to how you're going to plan your cash flow from getting to the various different stages. I know that, you know, some developers trip up on cash flow and if their their investment isn't going to work, there's it, nine times out of 10, it will be poor p- cash flow f- uh, planning, poor logistics planning or none at all that will put pay to a development. So why not get somebody who's grounded in commercial property investment commercial management somebody like a quantity surveyor with a background in 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 in, whose background is in the whole uh overarching development process not just cost management of materials during a construction project but cost management and cash management and cash flow management from the thoughts of investment to the appraisal and investment right the way through the construction phases what's the best use for the project what's our marketing strategy for the project so it might be sometimes a developer has got an idea for an investment but there might not be a market for it so so a quantity surveyor a chartered quantity surveyor is probably a good person to speak to for initial advice if you're thinking about doing property development development or a uh, any construction project it's probably a first port of call because they can also procure not only your construction but your design team think about what contracts you're going to need uh, and and really do that initial planning and advice process so I see the so the role of the quantity surveyor I think coming out of this a chartered quantity surveyor will be more broad a broad brace based and somebody that might even be brought in even before an architect's been brought in I know I do my own property development and I would there's certain processes that I go through before I'll bring on board an architect now you know you'll think well Generally, an architect is brought in early because of the planning process. You want to see if you get planning permission. You want to see what might work on a particular site. But I think there's a step back from that. I think there's the um, uh, the sourcing of a project, the sourcing of a particular development and what uses we could put it to. And so there's some maths to do. There's some calculations to do before you bring in a, uh, an architect. So a chartered surveyor uh, as role is a lot more so for, for for those property developers investors out there a chartered quantity surveyor's role is something that starts right at the beginning even before you get on board your design team is that is that is the investment likely to stack up in the first place? Are we thinking about the best use for that particular land or that particular project to bring us an, uh, a return on our investment? So a quantity surveyor can really give you good advice at the beginning and probably right the way through. And particularly coming out of this recession or this lockdown, um, there will be key elements of risk that you'll need to think about, particularly about your cash and how your cash is used and how your cash is managed. So there's a role of the quantity surveyor will be, I think, going forward, more of a cash manager than a cost manager. Although cost management will still be part of that process, I think cash 
management and cash flow management is going to be absolutely key because there'll be a lot of distressed companies out there. There'll be cash flow pressures, pinch points. So really, it wants somebody with that experience to get their hands around it with you to, to make something more transparent and talk to you about the contractual aspects of keeping control of your supply chain in terms of cash and all, but also still um, incentivizing your contractor and your supply chain to do their work, even though you're kind of taking away the responsibility of the cash management uh, from uh, from one of the th- and and really so that they can concentrate on doing what they do best, and that is constructing product projects. So there's ways and means of doing that, particularly if you've still got a contract that's on the go you know so there if you've got warranties there may be certain stepping rights that you can use if you're if you've got funder warranties or if you you've got subcontract warranties there may be opportunities for stepping rights to take uh, more of a transparent control over cash but if you're doing a new project you may want to look at standard form of contract but also with some tweaks in, in enables you to keep control of the supply chain with uh, alliance contracts would probably be a good start as well. The NEC has got an alliance contract in it now, and there's other types of alliance contracts that you might want to look at as opposed to traditional, just because the nature of the market is changing and the risks are changing, and there's going to be a lot more risk on uh, cash, liquidity, and insolvency. And, and solvency. So I would su- I would suggest having a look at these different options coming out of this lockdown. And a good charter quantity surveyor, you can look on the RICS RICS website, uh, just, you know, when you talk to your quantity surveyor, when you want to appoint a quantity surveyor, ask him about his background. Is he involved in property development? Has he got his own developments? You know, is he used to uh, the appraisals? Is he used to understanding around uh, the different types of what we can do with different types of contracts? You know, you might want to, as I say, you might want to keep control of cash a bit more. Can he advise, you know, is he is he got expertise in advising on more transparent ways of, um, of, of, of contracting projects? Can he advise on ways in which we can incentivize the contractors and the supply chain, maybe ring fencing the contractors overheads and profit? maybe looking at how we can increase their overheads and profit and there are constructive and creative ways in which you can do that and it doesn't need to be a race to the bottom it doesn't need to be uh, a competitive tendering race to the bottom which in fact in the long term can uh, can generate more risk than it actually solves so i would say yes thinking about quantities of our role a lot wider uh, level of skills and expertise than than you may realise. Uh, but I would certainly um, start to talk to one, select one, talk to him about his background. How can he help you? What is what is his niche? What is his area of expertise? And you might be surprised that they can probably give you a bit more, uh, a bit more of a steer on an investment before you get into it too far before you spent too much money on a design team you know let's get the basics right is this project is this deal going to stack up is this investment going to stack up and if it does we go through different phases of a high level appraisal going into more detail and then uh, only then shall we invest in paying designers and design team and planning and and all of these other things that need to take place uh, looking at different finance options debt finance equitable finance joint ventures you know these are all things that can be discussed and a chart quantities of i can help you with um, before you actually start putting your hand in your pocket so there you are i hope that's been helpful bit of a long one uh, today but it's something I just kind of wanted to it's been on my mind to talk about for a little while because there will be uh, changes I think the scene and uh, on contracting and developments are going to be different coming out of uh, the lockdown so I just wanted to share that with you I hope it's been really helpful and useful and there's been some good points and things for you to think about so uh, have a great day 
there's sun shining go out and do some exercise get that nice fresh air while there's less pollution around and um this is stuart davidson your friendly qs signing off see you in the next video cheers